friends of the Boys and Girls Club. This is Miss Joanne from the Boys and Girls Club of Southeast Louisiana. I'm glad you're joining me. And today we are in the forest. In a forest right behind me as you can see. What is a forest? It's basically where a group of trees and other plants grow. So really a third of the world is, our earth and the world is covered by forests. But today we're really gonna focus on forests in the United States. So let's break it down. There's three different kinds of forests. Now we've already talked about the rainforest a few weeks ago. And then the other two we're gonna talk about today. The first is deciduous forest. It's also known as a temperate forest. And then we have the boreal forest, also known as a coniferous forest. So I have a map here to show you just where the forests in the United States are. So let me hold this up here. And as you can see, the big X's up here on the top of Minnesota and of course Alaska, those are where our boreal or coniferous forests are. But all up the East Coast in all the states from Mississippi to Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, New, uh, New York, New Jersey, um, Louisiana, those all have deciduous forests. So let's talk a little bit more closely about what that means. So a deciduous forest is actually a forest where you have seasons. So there's not extreme temperatures. So you'll have a fall where leaves fall. Now leaves fall, we know, and they change colors. And that's really based on the weather and the different kinds of trees, the colors. They can be red, yellow, orange, and even purple. So we know that there's a fall, and then we know we have a winter when things are kind of dormant. And then you see the springtime when buds start coming out on trees and, and you start seeing some growth of leaves. At the same time, you're seeing the animal life come to, to come, come out at springtime as well. So the trees that have a tendency to grow in there are your hardwoods. So you're gonna see growth, um, different trees like maples, beeches, pine trees, and then you're gonna see a variety of animals also. So in a deciduous forest, you might see animals like spiders, salamanders, uh, bears, which we're gonna talk about, deers, foxes, those kinds of um, animals. Now, when I talked about animals coming to life in the spring, it's true. You'll start to see baby animals born. You might see more squirrels running around. Um, you might see them building their nests. A, a nest for a squirrel is actually called a dray. So those may be being built. Um, and just like in the rainforest, in um, the deciduous forest, there's different levels. So we talked about the canopy, the understory, and the forest floor. And that holds true also for the deciduous forest. So you might see like at the very top, you might see some squirrels up in the canopy. And then you might see some insects like aphids and ants on the leaves there. And then you might see woodpeckers further down the tree, like on the, um, going at the bark and the um, down below and where the root system is, you might even see some burrow, burrowers like animals that dig holes into the ground like badgers. Now forest animals and plants really help each other. So for example, um, some animals eat the berries on the plants and the nuts and from the plants while others help fertilize plants from the pollen on um, on different flowers. So they kind of work, coincide together. So they help bring things together. For example, a squirrel might bury an acorn, which ultimately comes into a tree. So let's talk a little bit more about coniferous forests or boreal. They're really very cold forests. Temperatures there get below 40 degrees. And those are really, like I said on our map, are gonna be found up in Northern Minnesota, all up in Canada and Alaska. So that's really where you're gonna find those cold, cold forests. So these are cold climates where you're gonna see trees like you would find like Christmas type trees, like pine trees, spruce, and fir trees. And these trees, they're known as evergreens because they grow these hard needles, like pine needles that we see. They protect the tree during the winter and when other plants and other trees lose their leaves, they do not lose them. They also have these tough pine cones. So let's take a look at a pine cone. Now, a pine cone is a way a plant is actually able to release its seed. So when it falls, it's all closed up. Obviously in this pine cone, it's opened up and already allowed the seeds to come out. So on evergreen trees like spruce and pine, you're going to find things like pine cones that grow and hold seeds. So what are some of the animals that live in the boreal or the coniferous forest. Well, you might see a moose. Um, they may be eating some of the bark that's on trees. And moose are a very beautiful animal. They have these big, large, um, 
these big old antlers that are covered in this like kind of soft material that kind of looks velvety. You might also see a porcupine with all its thousand quills out, or you might see a gray wolf. Now gray wolves, they live in packs of animals. Um, they work as a team to actually get food. So that is something you might see. And you also may see owls in the coniferous forest. So in addition to those animals, you might also see woodchucks, mice, squirrels, fox, and lynx that all live in the colder boreal or coniferous um, forest. So let's talk about what is plentiful in a forest, and those are trees. Now, think about it. Trees are the oldest and the biggest living thing on Earth. Now, the largest tree in the United States is in California, and um, it is actually 365 feet tall, and it's in California, and it's in the redwoods, and that would be as high as like an Apollo space rocket. Or if you took two football fields and you laid them on, on end, it would be taller than that. Now the oldest tree, which is also found in California, is a bristlecone pine, and they actually call it Methuselah. It's just a name they gave it. And it's 4,768 years old. That is a very, very old tree. Now how do we know how old a tree is? How do we get that information? Well, if I was to take a tree and I was to cut it in half, I would look inside and what I would see inside that trunk of that tree would be rings. Now each ring indicates a year that the tree has been living. So you could count these rings and it would indicate not only how long it's been living, but also what it was like, how much it grew that year. It might indicate whether or not um, it had a lot of moisture, if there was a lot of rain that year. It might give scientists an idea of if it would dry or if there were very little sunshine that year. So you could actually count the rings that you see inside the trunk of the tree to give you an idea of how old that tree is and what its life's been like. Now I said that it was a living, um, that trees were living, and it is very true. They actually breathe. Now we are familiar with the whole concept of photosynthesis, and it's through that that trees actually release oxygen, so they're actually breathing. Now, we need oxygen to live, and animals need oxygen to live. So, what we're going to do today is we're gonna do a little experiment. We're going to take some leaves, and we're gonna take some water. Now, this is an experiment that may take a little while to do, so you'll have to be patient. But what you're going to do is you're going to take some leaves, and you're going to put them in a bowl. So these are straight off my tree at home. I'm gonna place them at the bottom of this bowl, and I am going to put some water over it. I'm gonna cover these leaves in water. Now, you might wanna put it out in the sunshine. It'll warm up the water a little bit, and it'll kind of get the process going. But ultimately what you're going to see in an hour or so is you're gonna see some little bubbles on the surface of the leaf. That is oxygen being released from the leaf. Now, we talked about some animals that live in our two different kinds of forests, and I wanted to share with you some of the arts and crafts that I made based on some of those animals. So, my first animal is an owl. Now, owls live, both different kinds of animals live in both kinds of forests. The thing that's interesting about owls is their eyes do not move in the sockets. Their heads can move back and forth, but their eyes do not move. Also, Owls have very, very silent, are able to, to fly very silently because of some special feathers that they have on their wings. That's very interesting about them. They also like to eat things that are still alive, meaning they don't like to find something dead in the forest and eat it. So they're gonna be searching for small things like mice and other small things, salamanders that they can eat. So let me show you how you might make an owl. So I took a large paper plate, as you can see, and I cut off the top right here. So this is gonna be where the ears are. Now the ears are interesting on an owl in that they have kind of a placement that's one's higher than the other on their head because they really, really use their sense of hearing. They hunt largely at night, so hearing is, is very important to them. So I took my plate and I cut it. Then I took two cupcake holders, simply like this, and I place them 
as parts of their eyes right there on the paper plate. Then I took two smaller pieces of paper plate, cut those in half, and I added the wings just like that. And finally, I cut out the beak. I put the beak on there. So, and you can paint your um, owl whatever color you'd like. There are snowy white owls. You could do this one. I chose to do this one a light brown and yellow. So that's completely up to you. All right. So let's put our owl over here. Now, our next animal is the skunk. I don't know, has anybody ever seen a skunk or should I say smell the skunk? So this is actually could be a puppet and I made it on a paper, or a paper bag, just a little lunch bag. So what you would do is you would take your paper bag, the part that opens would be in the front and you can paint it any color you want because you'll sometimes see um, mostly black, but you sometimes kind of see a reddish or a brownish color squirrel or um, um, skunk. So let's see, we're gonna put these right here. So you could use your tan or your brown if you so desire. So you would paint that. And then I went ahead and cut out two pieces of the tail because you're going to have a white stripe going down the tail. You're going to actually glue that onto your paper bag. Then ultimately you will also add a stripe down the forehead. You will also want to add a couple of ears. You can just cut out any size you'd like. You can add those. And then of course you can add two eyes and a nose. Now I used one of the little puff balls, but you could of course do anything you'd like. You can use just a marker and make your nose if you'd like. But that is a skunk. Now skunks do use this, the foul liquid odor that comes from them as a way to get to safety, to protect themselves. So they really only have five or six squirts in their body at a time, and it takes about 10 days for them to, to get that smell back. So they have a limited amount of that poor odor that they can spray at you, but that's the way skunks protect themselves, and it's an animal that you will find in the forest, in the deciduous forest. All right. The next one is the bear. Now, there are three different kinds of bears. And there's the brown bear, the black bear, and of course we've talked about the polar bear. So really, black bears can be brown also. But in this case, I went ahead and created this um, brown bear. Now, we know that, or we've been told that bears hibernate, and that's somewhat true, in that they sleep very, very hard, but they're not completely asleep. Many of the bears will still get up and make a little movement. They generally don't eat, but they're not in complete hibernation at the time. They do live in dens and they do have babies that are called cubs. So what I did is I took a paper plate and I kind of cut it in this shape, almost like a moon type shape. And I painted it brown, but again, you can use black if you wanna make a black bear, a darker brown bear, or you can even make a polar bear if you really wanted to. So then I took a love small plate and I cut out a circle to be the bear's head. I added the ears from the leftover and I added a face and a tail. So that's how you would make a brown bear or a black bear. And finally, I thought it'd be fun to make a porcupine. So porcupine is something you might find on the forest floor and it's very, very simple. I cut this shape out of a small paper plate and then I added all sorts of, they're called quills. Now, you could use anything from paper or you could even use toothpicks to add your quills to your porcupine. And the last little thing I thought would be fun if you wanted to do, now, I really encourage you to go out and, and look around your neighborhood and see what kind of leaves you could find. We live in an area with a lot of trees and so, it's a lot of fun to just kind of go look and see the different kinds of leaves that I've collected. So one of the things I like to do when I collect my leaves are just simply to do leaf rubbings. Now I like to do it on the back part of the leaf because that's where you have a lot more of the texture. But all you do is you take your leaf and you can put it under the paper here and you can rub it and you can get different kinds of shapes. 
So I'm gonna take my leaf, I'm simply gonna take my crayon and I'm going to go back and forth over my leaf. This will give you a very interesting shape looking like that. And you can take a variety of shapes. You could go find oak leaves, you could find ones on crepe myrtles, you could find one, um, you could take pine needles even, and you could do that. So I hope this gave you some ideas of some things you could do um, in and around forests. I really encourage you, if you have an opportunity, to take a walk around a forest. There's so much to see. Thank you for joining me. Bye-bye.